Praise God, praise God, praise God. With the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty for those that are in Christ Jesus. From Prophet Mark, the church without judgment. Got my notes here. We're going to do a short little broadcast. I started out. I didn't have no energy. Wow, we're only in uh, the second month. And I'm talking about my energy on my broadcast was horrible just now. But I'm not going to do anything second class for the Lord because... Um, we can work, we can do all these things, but then when it comes to God's house and his business, he wants us to be about his business. Hopefully you guys are doing well. I have my notes right here. Today, this is called, I have overcame the world. This is called, I have overcame the world. I want you to know that he's overcame the world, Christ Jesus. And that could be a wonderful thing because... We need someone that we can count on. Do you know who you can count on? Um, I don't know too many people I can count on, but I know a man on that Calvary cross. His name was Jesus. I always can count on him. If you can count, have one person that you can count on, that you can call, that you can maybe text them and say, pray for me. If you can text them and say, pray for my children, uh, Text them or call them and say, I'm having a surgery. And you already know by outstanding measures that they're going to be ready for you. Today, he says, I've overcame the world. I'm going to be jumping around a few scriptures. I'm going to pray real quick. I felt like we needed something because I did. And I wanted a message that was going to catapult me into having some more faith. I need, I need to really be mature in this walk. And sometimes we need a seasoned word from the Lord. Father, help us right now in the name of Jesus to have clarity right now with so many distractions, so many things that we need to do. You have a lot of folks that are sick. You have a lot of folks that have unbelief. You have a a lot of folks are not believers. You have a, a lot of folks that believe heresies and lies. We have a lot of deceit going on, Lord. We have a lot of deception. But Lord, your word says, and we're going to understand it's true, that you said you have overcame the world in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. This is going to be really organic, I believe. I looked at it yesterday and I said, Lord, what do you want me to speak about? And then this, I'm going to give you a backdrop. And then I was taking the book of John, John the Beloved in John chapter 16. And Jesus is talking about a few different things. He's talking about how he's connected to the father and the father is connected to him. Jesus is talking about he doesn't do anything on his own initiative, but he only is provoked by what he hears the father tell him. And that is a great promise for us in an instruction. How often do we get in front of the Lord and we mess things up because we're going too fast or we're going out on our own will and not, in the Lord's. So we're going to start in John chapter 16. And I'm going to go to verse 31. Jesus answered them, do you now believe? He's asking us today, remnant, do you now believe? If we believe, we should see some application. We should see some fruit. 32. Indeed, the hour is coming. Yes, has now come that you will be scattered. He's talking about later after Jesus goes up to be with the Father. He says, indeed, the hour is coming. Yes, has, has now come that you will be scattered. Now each to his own, each to his own way and will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone because the father is with me. Jesus in 32 is speaking about you're going to go your own way. You're going to be scattered. 
You're going to be confused. You're going to be distracted and you will leave me alone. But Jesus says, I am never alone. In 32, he says, you will betray me, but I am never alone because I will go to my father. And yes, I am not alone because the father is with me. This is a great tangible lesson. You may say, what's the lesson? Even when man betrays you, God is with us. That's why we can call him Abba. And look at 33. These things I have spoken to you that in me, you may have peace. This is how we have perfect peace. These things I have spoken to you that in me, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, be of good cheer. I have overcame the world. Be of good cheer. Why? Because he has overcame the world. But in the world, we will have tribulation. That word tribulation means severe affliction. That word tribulation means distresses, plural, of life. So tribulation period will be an extreme distress, distresses of life. Tribulation will be a severe time of affliction. It talks about a seven year period where there will be extreme affliction and distresses, multiple distresses of life at the same time. But Jesus says, I have overcame the world and be of good cheer. I'm going to prove that we should be of good cheer because he have, he's overcame the world. He has abolished death. He died on the cross. He resurrected after dying. After three days, nobody has ever done it but him. By his own power. He's in the Father and the Father is in him. I'm going to show you how he overcame it. Matthew 9. Matthew 9, verse 1 through 9. I'm going to give us a backdrop. There's a man that's a paraplegic. He is sick. He's been sick. Uh-huh. And he needs to be healed. And his sins needs to be forgiven. So Jesus is getting ready to do another double portion. You remember our last message? We talked about a double portion. Well, listen to this story and remember in John 16, 33, these things I have spoken to you that in me, that in me, you may have peace. If you want peace, let's get close to Jesus because in the world you will have tribulation. I explained what it was, but be of good cheer. How could we be of good cheer when he just said we could be a distress and we and we could have severe affliction. He says, be of good cheer because I have overcame the world. I'm going to show you how. In Matthew chapter nine. So he got into the boat. Crossed over. He will always cross over, meaning he doesn't stay stagnant. Jesus the Christ. So he got into the boat and crossed over and came to his own city. Then behold, or look, they brought uh, him a paralytic lying on a bed. This is pretty bad. You got the picture. Some of us have been lying on a bed, meaning that we're stagnant. We don't know what to do. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paraplegic, son, be of good cheer. Here we go again. Remember in John 16, 33, he says, be of good cheer because he's overcame the world. Look at this. In Matthew 9, chapter 9, verse 2, son, be of good cheer. Now he's going to tell you why. Your sins are forgiving you. He needed a healing, but he got 
his sins forgiven first. Jesus will always do the most important thing first, but he will always take care of the full miracle. Remember when he turned the water into wine, he took care of the most important thing because they had a festival and it would go on for at least a week to 10 days. Verse three, and at once some of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemies. See, when Jesus does the real, they'll act like it's fake. But Jesus will do the real. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, he said, why do you think evil in your hearts? The reason why the world is set up the way it is today, because there's evil in our hearts. And then he says in five. For which is easier to say your sins are forgiven you or to say, arise and walk. Jesus explained that it was as easy as the first. First of all, he said, your sins are forgiven. Son, be of good cheer. Then he did the miracle. Amen. And four, but Jesus knowing that their thoughts said, why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise and walk. Verse six, but that you may know that the son of man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paraplegic, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. Now, when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God who had given such power to men, to men. Do you see how this miracle took place? In verse two, he says, son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven. But he explains here. I'm doing this, but that you may know that the son of man has power on earth to forgive sins. Jesus has power on earth to forgive sins. That's why he's the son of God. And then he then he says, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. I don't need to do much more, but I will go to your house, pick up your bed and go to your house means there's nothing more for me to do. I have did it in real time. In real time, he did a miracle and his sins were forgiven. Jesus never leaves you halfway healed. He will do everything right. He will take his time. He already knows before how he's going to do it. Humanity, sometimes we get excited and we just leave you present and we don't heal you. But today let's get our healing. That's why in John 16, 33, he says, these things I have spoken to you. He already told the disciples for three and a half years that in me, you may have peace in the world. You will have tribulation. You will have severe affliction and distresses of life. Why? Because of our fallen nature in the garden. We were supposed to be stewards, but we fell. We fell on our butts. And now the promise is we have everlasting life. We have everlasting life in him. But now we're going to have some issues that we have to overcome and we overcome them by the blood of the lamb and by our testimony and that we don't love our life unto death. And we stay unspotted from the world. We may, we're going to fall. We're going to fall. We're going to get dirty, but get up and wipe yourself off because we must be of good cheer because he says, I've overcame the world and I've shown you how. He has power to forgive sin and he has power to do a healing. 
If you need both of those things done today, I'm going to show you how you got to do it. It's 1 John 1, 9. 1 John 1, 9 says this, and it's a condition. It says, if we confess our sins, that means if you want to be in right standing with God, right standing with God is righteousness with him. If we confess our sins, guess what he does? He is faithful. How many of us in humanity now is faithful and just every time? Not one of us. When things get ugly, we leave people. When we don't want to do something, we don't do it anymore. And we will get upset about it and we don't care because we're upset. And we've gone through some things and I understand that. But I know a man that says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all sins of unrighteousness. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to say that again. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So he's going to forgive us of our sins first and then cleanse us. That's the conscience side of it. It's two parts. If we confess, that's the, so that's the confession is condition. If we confess out of our mouth and then we have to believe it, we believe it in, in our hearts. That's when the confession is made. Uh-huh. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. So he's going to forgive us. Then when we believe it, that's faith. It's accredited to righteousness. And he's so he's going to just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He cleanses us by our conscience sake. That's why I was looking at that. We are cleansed by the word of God and by the testimony. We're cleansed by his one time sacrifice. We're cleansed by our prayers. And he has an intercessory prayer in John 17. And he talked about those saints, the apostles that you gave me, Lord. I have not lost any of them. And that since I didn't lose them, when I go away, hide them in the shadow of your wings. And just like he says that to them, he's saying that for us now. He's hiding us. There's going to be some tough things that's getting ready to happen upon this earth. And he wants to hide us. But if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us, to cleanse us of our conscience, of a smeared conscience of a, a wavering conscience where we waver back and forth, where we have unforgiveness. We may have bitterness. We have, may, have maybe a little hate. We may have a little jealousy and a little bitterness. We ha may have a little malice, a little envy. Today, let's confess our sins to one another. You know why we're not confessing our sins to one another? Because we have to confess them to God first. Just ask him, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Then reconcile whoever you got to do it with. Just reconcile back with him. God first and then man. That's why he says, how can you say you love God who you haven't seen and you don't love your brother whom you've seen? God's not going to heal us until we heal ourselves and we go to him and say, Father, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me. I know you're the Savior. I want you to save me and I want you to be the Savior of my soul. You're saved. Father God, we bless you right now. We thank you that you're the Savior. We thank you, Lord, that you have overcame the world. Lord, we overcame the world by the testimony of our word. 
and we did not love this life unto death. Lord, you overcame so now that we are overcomers. Lord, we are overcomers because you love us and nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Lord, help us, help us to deliver the word. Help us when we have fear to understand that we can just say, Lord, help me right now. Save me all over again. Ask the Lord to save me, Lord. Lord, love me again. He wants to love us again. If you need to call that special friend, call that friend that you can get some service from, that you can get some support from. Don't call that friend that's going to gossip about someone and talk about and make you feel worse. Call someone that's going to share their heart and maybe not even do anything but listen because we all need support. And God said today, we're overcomers by the blood of the lamb and by our testimony, and we did not love our life unto death. That is the word today of the Lord, that we are overcomers, and we love you. With the spirit of the Lord, there is, there is liberty for all those that are in Christ Jesus, and love the Lord with all their heart and all their strength and their neighbor as their self. And if you do that, you fulfilled all the law. Prophet Mark. From the Church Without Judgment, we love you. Shabbat shalom. Amen. Bye-bye.